Which view is the top view? Come on, look at the colors. You could do it. Did you guess C? I hope you did. Well, I hope that was enough to get you warmed up for this game right now, cause it's Smarter Day, take it away! All right, all right, it is Smarter Day. Are you ready for this? To the over 337,000 players proving their wits and looking for a little payday, let's see how smart you really are. Q1 starts right now. Which of these is an autumn month in the Southern Hemisphere? July, February, or April? Oh yeah, the Southern Hemisphere. That word comes from an ancient Greek word meaning half of a sphere. It's how we divide the globe up. You're probably in the northern one right now just based on population figures. But if you're not, then you're celebrating autumn right now in April. April is the answer here. 114,775 of you getting that one right. Wow, knocking out over 100,000 of you here. Thought it was February. Oh my goodness, I told you, these are gonna be the tougher questions. Let's see what you got, Q2. When the cable channel AMC launched, what did the M stand for? Movie, music, or magazine? Yeah, you know AMC, right? Well, even though AMC is quickly becoming known for its original series like Mad Men, The Walking Dead, and my all-time favorite, Breaking Bad, it used to be all about classic movies because it was called American Movie Classics. Movie is the answer here at Q2. 219,847 of you getting that one right. I see a lot of people utilizing those free passes, those extra lives, oh yeah. American movie classic. What was your favorite classic movie? I'm a Hitchcock girl all the way. Q3. What toys famously wobble but do not fall down? Teeteroos, Eggman, or Weebles? And although I never owned these, I'm a child of the 90s, so Furbies were it for me. But these might not fall down, but they've kept a low profile over the last few years. You can still find these wobbly weebles today, though. Weebles is the answer here at Q3. 235,720 of you knowing this one. Yeah, they're like little people, roughly the size of that silly putty egg. Remember Silly Putty? That was all fun and games until you got it stuck in the carpet and your mom screamed at you. Q4, here we go. Which city is in the same time zone as Chicago, Detroit, Dallas, or Denver? Time zones, hemispheres, we're really going for it today. Did you make it safely through this one? Detroit to Chicago is not exactly an all-day drive, but the time zone line does go between them, putting Chicago in the central time zone, just like Dallas. Dallas is the answer here at Q4. 135,551 of you knew that one. Over 104,000 of you thought it was Detroit. I know. All right, we are on to Q5. Here it is. In logic, the bandwagon fallacy is also known as what? False dichotomy, begging the question, or appeal to popularity. You might know this one if you've ever been called a bandwagon fan, like if you're a Patriots fan right after they win the Super Bowl, right? Well, I hope you don't have any heated arguments coming up, but if you do, it's good to know your logical fallacies. Whenever someone joins something popular, you can say they're jumping on the bandwagon, hence the name. It's an appeal to popularity. 211,589 of you knew this one. You know what that means. You're jumping on the bandwagon to Q6. See what I did there? 
Mathematically, what are the shapes in classic Tetris games called? Nanominoes, polyabolos, or tetraminoes? All right, quick, picture it. All of those shapes falling endlessly faster and faster. You need to fit them into the right spot. But what are they called? Well, if you join squares together, you get polyominoes. If you join four squares together, you get tetraminoes from the prefix tetra, meaning four. Tetraminoes is the answer here at Q6. 153,110 of you probably played a lot of Tetris, right? Or Dr. Mario? Ooh, which is the better game? Let me know in the chat. All right, Teratopsis Dorinhi which replenishes its own cells is better known as what? Immortal mushroom, immortal jellyfish, or immortal flatworm? Teratopsis dorinhi. Thought it was a dinosaur at first myself. But very few creatures on Earth seem immune to aging. It's pretty much just J-Lo, Paul Rudd, and this thing right here. Adults are somehow able to regress to the early polyp stage, rejuvenating their own cells and living life again as a brand new jellyfish. Immortal jellyfish is your answer here at Q7. 110,519 of you knew that one. Listen, if Hollywood catches wind of this immortal jellyfish, I'm gonna start seeing immortal jellyfish face masks in the near future. Q8. Maurice Sendak created his wild things because he couldn't draw what? Tigers, horses, or dogs? Well, when this fact came out, his editor asked him, well, what can you draw? And he said, things. And then it was off to the races from there, quite literally. Though they did have to change the title from where the wild Horses are. Horses is your answer here at Q8. 54,497 of you getting that one right, knocking out over 60,000 of you here at Q8. Yes, well, did you know that that book was banned in the South because psychologists thought it was a little too dark for the children? Speaking of dark, the questions are only getting tougher from here on out. Q9, here we go. What band's album cover often depict a huge guitar-shaped flying vehicle? ELO, Boston, or Parliament? Come on, think back to those album covers. I know you used to have CDs. Well, Parliament had the occasional mothership, but nothing quite guitar-shaped. And ELO had kind of an intergalactic Simon game on a jukebox. Several threatening Boston covers show truly massive space guitars looming over the earth. Jung, 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 jung. Boston is the answer here at Q9. 41,000 of you, over 41,000 of you got that one. And you know what? It's more than a feeling for you because that means you're going on to Q10. Ayo, who did not win in the only best actress tie in Oscar history? Katherine Hepburn, Barbra Streisand, or Vanessa Redgrave? These are some legendary ladies, right? Three Oscar-winning actresses right here, but two of them were honored simultaneously in 1969. Another legend, Ingrid Bergman, cracked the envelope and announced the winners. The winners are Katherine Hepburn in Lion in the Winter and Barbara Streisand. The only best actress tie in history and I'm sorry, Vanessa Redgrave, it was not your year. 23,982 of you knew that one. And although she did not win that year, she won for Julia in 1978, a few years later. Q11, the principal owner of the Boston Red Sox also owns what British soccer team? Liverpool FC, Manchester FC, or West Ham United? All right, I'm gonna give you a little tip for my non-sports fans. FC clearly means football club. I can't say how Brits feel about being a part of the Fenway Sports Group, but that's what John W. Henry is founder and chairman of. That's the parent company of both the Red Sox 
and Liverpool. Liverpool FC is the answer here. 19,301 of you knew that one. Then you probably know that Liverpool is first in the Premier League. And I am only probably going to get to say this once this year. The Red Sox are in last place in their division. Q12. What Monty Python style name did the press give a 1979 incident involving President Carter? Killer Rabbit, Silly Walk, or Dead Parrot? This is a fun one. No one ever figured out exactly what happened in this incident, but it was definitely bad PR heading into an election year. On a fishing trip in Georgia, something swam towards Carter's boat that he swung his oar at it, and he insisted it was a rabbit. And the press called it the killer rabbit. 16,530 of you know all about those crazy swimming killer rabbits. You can only fight them off with oars. Oh yeah, a couple more left here for you to win it all. Can you hang in there? It's Q13. Which of these Pennsylvania cities did not serve as the capital of the US? York, Washington, or Lancaster? Well, there was a lot going on in the 1700s history-wise as the U.S. was, you know, sorting itself out into what it would eventually become. Both York and Lancaster served as U.S. capitals for a brief time, Lancaster only for a day, but Washington, Pennsylvania never did. Washington, 3,651 of you getting this one right. Oh my goodness, knocking out over 12,000 here. This is it. It's Seventh question here at Q13. Washington became Washington, D.C., not Washington, Pennsylvania. All right, I told you only the smart are going to survive in this one. We have two left. Can you prove it? Q14. Which of these is on the flag of the only inhabited U.S. territory in the Southern Hemisphere? Tree, eagle, or star? I know, we're back to the Southern Hemisphere on this one. What? We're autumn people here. All right, first, you have to figure out the territory. You don't know it? I'll tell you. It's American Samoa. Now you got to figure out what's on the flag. Well, I guess I could tell you that too. It's an eagle. An eagle is on that flag. Come on, it's a US territory. We love our eagles. Eagle is the answer here at Q14. 4,230 of you knew that one. Uh-huh, and you know what time it is now. For over 4,000 of you, you made it this far. We are down to the final round. Oh yes, it all comes down to this. You worked so hard. We went for 15 questions today, but you can't say that you want them all unless you get this one right now. Q15. What is the capital of the country from which the U.S. imports the most oil? Ottawa, Riyadh, or Caracas? It's now or never, baby! The U.S. consumes a lot of oil, we know. And while we produce a lot, we import a lot of it too. The top supplier of oil to the US, and it's not even remotely close, is O Canada, whose capital is Ottawa. Ottawa is the winning answer here at Q15. 2,937 of you are our new winners. <laughs> Oh yes, winner, winner, baby. 2,936 of you have just one smarter day. Ah oh, yes, flex all you want. You did it. It looks like we are all taking home a prize of about $1.70. Oh yeah, way to start your Saturday night off right. Bertram's, I see you there. A bowl of raspberries a day keeps the dummies away, I guess, because you're just so smart. Hillbilly Jim, I see you there too. Congrats, my friend. What a game. You guys were all over this game. You sure you're not in Mensa? Well, you should be. Great work. Stick around for words tonight with my man Tim Dunn.
He's so fun. You're gonna love him. And hey, don't forget, tomorrow night is Marvel Movie Trivia. Test your superhero knowledge and win enough money to be on Tony Stark's level. Right? I'll be back on HQ Sports Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for the big championship game. So come back and hang with me there. Until next time, I'm Lauren Gambino. Have a great weekend, everyone!